of this word that I got. So he says this, um, my will is to bless you. <laughs> oh, I like that. So he's saying, my will is to bless you. My will is to lavish my children who desire to obey. This is good. Don't miss this. He wants to lavish you. He wants to lavish you because you're his child. And he wants to lavish you because you have a desire to obey. And the only reason you would have a desire to obey is because you're convinced that it pays to do so. I promise you, you will not show up for work if you think you're not going to be paid. Now I know it's an honor and a privilege to serve God, and some of us serve God, and we don't expect anything in return, and that's a good art. But you have to feed your families. I doubt very much that many of you would stay on the job if they came to you and said, hey, you know, we're just changing everything around, and we want you to be a volunteer from now on. There will no, no more, there, there will be no more uh, Friday uh, paychecks, but we're just trusting that you're going to trust God. But please, don't leave. Stick around and continue to put in your 40, 50, and 60 hours a week. Now, how many of you would say, oh, praise God? Right? So it's interesting because if you desire to obey, He will lavish you. And that's the first step to obedience is wanting to obey. And that comes from knowing that it pays. You have to believe that God is going to bless you if you obey Him. There's always a condition. He loves us no matter what, but He blesses those who obey. Favor is from obedience. And obedience comes from a heart that desires to please me. <laughs> the Lord your God. If you have lost your life, meaning you want what I want, then I will begin to give you the desires of your heart. I think this is a key. If you no longer want what you want anymore, and you want what He wants more than you want what you want, He's going to start honoring the desires that he put in you. He will start to fulfill everything according to his riches and his glory. He will withhold no good thing as he lavishes you with every blessing. If you want what he wants more than you want what you want, you will not fight him anymore. You will not battle anymore against him and you'll have plenty of resources and, and energy to destroy the works of the devil in the same way that Jesus taught. Yeah. That's good. I mean, I'm enjoying the Lord right now. I'm not saying what I said is good, but I believe He's speaking right now. Because that's my prayer. I don't want you to hear me. I want you to hear Him. Or I want my labor in vain. <laughs> I don't even know if I'll remember everything I'm saying right now, but it's a good thing we got it recorded. Amen. Good. Yeah. So, because, so then he goes into say, so he's talking about the heart and, and rewarding the desires of your heart that he himself put there. And here's what he said, because I know this is the reason he wants to, to reward the desires that he put in your heart is because he knows what desires he has put in you. And he says, I can see what requests are from my spirit and what requests are from the flesh. If I'm asking for things just to get things so I can feel good about who I am, then I have the wrong motive. On the other hand, if I ask for things according to what I believe He wants to do based on what He foreknew and based on what He has recently revealed, then I can ask from a position of expectancy. And when I ask from a position of expectancy, I ask from faith, and He always rewards faith. Ask yourself, <laughs> what was that? That's good. Ask yourself, <laughs> oh, okay, so because I know what desires I put inside of you, I can see what requests are from the Spirit and what requests are from the flesh. So ask yourself, what is my motivation in all things? So every time you want to do something or you want something, ask yourself, what is my motivation in wanting this? If it's insecurity from fear of not being accepted and you're asking for something so you can look cool, that would be the wrong motivation. 
But on the other hand, if you want something from the Lord and you know that you've been doing the will of God and that He desired to bless you according to His riches and glory, and maybe it's peace that He wants to bless you with. Maybe it's more love in your life, better relationships in your family. Maybe it's the joy that's unspeakable that literally crushes the enemy. When you're laughing, the enemy is running to find a hiding place because the only way that you would be in laughter is if you were in faith and in the presence of God and faith is released in the, in the hearing of the word. So in, in the name of Jesus, you are receiving the word of God and therefore because the word is being spoken and faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God, your faith shield is getting bigger and stronger and the enemy is losing his grip to bring torment and you will find rest for your soul. <laughs> so in all things, ask yourself, what is my motivation? So that you can ask with a pure motive. Every time we ask, we should ask ourselves, is my motive pure? And I promise you that if your motive is pure, the Lord will reward those who diligently seek after Him and who ask according to His purpose and will. Those who desire to make my name great. This is another key. I used to want to be an actor. You know, I was studying, uh, you know, drama. And I thought, well, this would be cool. You know, I did a play in college and I learned all my lines. I was a big pet in uh, Shakespeare's big pet. I learned the lines. I was like, I still remember some of The supernatural solicity cannot be ill, cannot be good. If ill, why have they given me this earnest of success? Commencing in the truth. I am playing of cargo. If good, why do I yield to that suggestion whose horrid image doth fix my hair and make my seated heart knock in my ribs against the use of nature? Very good. And then the Lord got a hold of me. And he said, You don't have to pretend to act. Just follow after me. Ask me. And then you can act like me. And I started to want to act like him is to act like someone else. <laughs> yeah, I love the second chapter of Acts. Can I ask you a question? Those who desire to make my name great, I want to make my name great. And then I missed the whole point of my relationship with Christ as I denied Him and went into a cycle of rebellion, bringing me to an attempted suicide where the rock punctured my gas tank and in my last breath, my engine ran out of gas because of the rock of my salvation. Jesus Christ steps in at my last breath and gave me new breath and said, now that you're broken, I can use you. Yes. And so I don't want what I want anymore. I want what He wants. He has all of me. And in exchange, He's given me all of Him. Do you want everything He has for you? Well, you might want to ask in what you might need to surrender. Maybe it's the ideas or the mindsets that disagree with His plan to bless you according to His riches and glory. Maybe you believe that you're not worthy. You haven't done enough right. And the Lord is saying, you are now the righteousness of the Lord God Almighty. Those who desire to make my name great as the Lord God Almighty, so I also will make your name great to draw many to my kingdom. Why does he want you to make his name great? So that he can make your name great to do what? To draw many to his kingdom. Some of you are evangelists. Some of you are pastors. Some of you may be apostles or prophets. And you don't even know it yet because you've been in a culture that does not promote the movement of the gifts of the Spirit. And the Lord's about to change all of that because He has marked you for unmerited favor, which means you did not deserve or earn it in your own doing. He gave you the gift of righteousness, which is to be in right standing. The kingdom of heaven is quickly advancing upon those who truly desire to be fulfilled in my mission to destroy the works of the devil and to make all things new. If you desire to work with him as a partner, as a son, as a daughter, as a co-laborer of the kingdom of heaven, then you will work to destroy the works of the devil who comes to rob and kill so the Lord goes back into finishing this address by saying, ask. 
Ask with pure motives, and I will honor your request. Do not doubt or waver, but ask knowing that you are a son or a daughter. Ask from your position in Him. See, if you ask as though you're an outsider of the family, you should not receive anything from the Lord. You who doubt or waver should not think that you will receive anything from the Lord. So just don't doubt and don't waver. Ask believing that you will receive what you're asking for, knowing in advance that your motives are pure. And if you perceive or you discern that your motives are not pure, then adjust your motive. <laughs> and get cleaned up and repent before the Lord. <laughs> what does he say? He says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And the violent will take it by force. He's looking for warriors to rise up. Not against one another, but against the evil that works in the flesh, the fallen part of man. The sinful nature that works against Christ, which is anti-Christ. And so he goes on to say, do not doubt or waver, but ask knowing that you are a son or a daughter. From your understanding, ask. From your understanding of your position as an insider, ask. From your faith, ask. From your hope, ask. From your selflessness, ask. Ask. He's telling us the right way to ask. If we will ask in such a way, you will receive from the Lord. Everything that you're asking for, according to His will and purpose, will be rewarded to you. It's really amazing. I'm getting blessed by His message. <laughs> you know, I hope you don't say, hey, I went to the Rock of the Harbor, and uh, it was powerful. That Nathan guy, no, please don't say that. Say, Jesus showed up, and he brought a message, and it was called Ask, and it changed my life, because now I'm not asking for what I want, I'm asking for what he wants, because I no longer live, I was crucified with Christ, I was risen again on the third day, I was brought back from my dead, from the destruction of sin, and he held me back up, and he caused me to be a lamp in the light in the darkness of this world, and all I'm going to do from now on is say, Lord, what do you want of me, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to ask him, what do you want with my life? And I'm going to do it. Because I am not my own. I was bought by a price. And therefore, I want to give him a good return. Amen. On his investment of himself. Yes. I want to give him a good return. I want to hear thou faithful servant. Well done. At the end of the day. And I know you want to hear the same thing. And I believe if you ask God in everything that you're doing, if you're not sure, ask. Don't just, some of you young people, don't just go off to school because you think it's a good school. Ask God to show you the right school and then go there and occupy and possess that land. And let that campus be lit on fire by the power of the living God who placed you based on what He for you. Some of you, if you're looking for jobs, don't settle for the first job you get. Maybe God doesn't want you at McDonald's. Maybe He wants you at the Taj Mahal. Let Him give you the job that He wants for you according to His riches. Glory. Some of you are in jobs and you can't stand your job. You can't stand the people around you, the people you work with. They're totally anti-Christ and it's bothering you and you've had enough. Well, then ask and let the Lord deliver you in a new season. And I promise you, if you're a light in your workplace and the work there is done, He will release you. Some of you are battling through family issues and spirits of accusation and condemnation. And God wants you to know that He is battling right alongside you. And every time you ask, He is faithful. Hallelujah. Yeah. I don't even know where I am. But it doesn't matter. You guys know that I don't, I don't have to have everything on the page. I've seen some sermons that put you to sleep in a hurry like a tranquilizer. It was never the will of God for church to be lame and boring. It's supposed to be a good time. We're hanging out with Jesus. He invited us to the royal feast. He wants some people to consume the living bread. Yeah. From your understanding of your position as an insider, ask. From your faith, ask. From your hope, ask. From your selflessness, ask. According to my will, the Lord your God, ask. And I shall 
open the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing that it cannot be contained. Ask of me and become a witness of true sonship. Obey my commands, both spoken and written, so that there can be an open heaven among you. And let each one receive according to his faith, believing that I am a rewarder of those who diligently seek me. Ask of me with a pure heart and witness the reward of those who desire to do my will. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you right now that you have visited us this day. And that, Lord, every effort that we would put forth without you would be in vain. And so, Lord, we desire to partner with you to see the Northwest revived. God, we want to see every church experience everything according to your plan. Lord, we want to see the body of Christ built up around us. We want to see denominational, divisional barriers brought down, God. We want to see the religious pride of self ever be brought down in the city. Lord, we want to see every weapon that was formed against the children of God come to no fruition. And Lord, that your plan would come forth to bring forth disciples of men and then of nations. God, we just thank you that you have trusted us with the responsibility, but more importantly, you have given us the ability to give the right response. And so, Lord, we just say yes. We are here as your servants. You have placed us by divine order. Lord, I pray that you would empower us as we walk by faith to do your will and that we would not forget to simply ask. And Lord, I thank you according to your will that it shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so we bless the people now. In Jesus' name. <laughs> amen. Amen. Amen.